Good day, good day, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Gov's Hero Review Videos. Uh, today we are going to be checking out another Season 2 hero, specifically the new 5-star legendary red hero, Ruby, the Portal Trooper Bulldozer. So, Ruby, as we saw, is available for summons from the Neon City Portal, which rolls around once every four weeks. Uh, it's tied to the Neon City event. Um, the odds for this portal, they're not the greatest. Uh, the featured heroes are pretty standard. You've got a 1% chance to get one of two options, but the unfeatured odds, it's only 0.6 of a percent chance to get any one of like 20 or 25 options. Uh, so those odds do drop off considerably. So in 100 summons, uh, you would have a 63.3% chance to get either of the two featured heroes and a 45.2% chance of getting any one of the... Uh, unfeatured heroes so not the greatest odds um, it drops way 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 down if you're trying to get a specific non-featured hero uh, her artwork um, or his artwork I should say probably so Ruby um, there's nothing which is gender defining it's kind of got some chunky boy uh, sort of stuff in my head I went her um, because of some of like the I guess curvature to the chest pieces but I don't know there's nothing really that's concretely him or her so I'm probably going to interchange between the two, I'm going to be honest. Um, but who's to say that uh, this form of trooper, battle trooper, can't be male or female, you know? Maybe maybe these portal troopers is uh, uh, like a legion kind of thing. Like there, there's not just one of them. It, maybe it's like Ruby is the name for this class of portal trooper. But anyway, um, I'm digressing. There's, there's a lot of those tiebacks to the portal troopers. We've got the portal they're stepping through. It's all red tinged and stuff. Um, carrying on with sort of the mask. Um, looks to it and all that sort of thing. So yeah, that's the artwork. Thank you to Team Go and Fearless Phantom for passing these along. Um, I do appreciate it. So uh, Ruby is, as I sort of kind of said, uh, only just added to the game at the time of this recording. Uh, she, he was added in January 2024 uh, at the tail end of that of this month. Um, part of Small Giant Games is standard practice for drip feeding new heroes into the season portals. Um, so. You know, each month it rolls around, there's a new hero, so you have to summon again and spend more money on the portal and so on and so forth. So it is an ongoing standard strategy that SGG have been employing since pff, all the way back in Season 2 of Empires and Puzzles, really. Um, so a long time now. So um, family-wise, uh, Ruby is a member of the corporate family, uh, which grants them a chance to... Steal, I think. it's prob I think I'm pretty sure it's a steal, but they receive have a tent... Fire up, my words are working well. There's a 15, 20, 25, or 30% chance to receive 50% of the healing done by the enemy uh, heroes when you have two, three, four, or five unique members of the corporate family in the battle. So um, there is also a defense bonus of plus three, six, nine, or 12% for again having two, three, four, or five unique members of the corporate family. I would say that this is probably the weakest of the, fam the season two family bonuses. Um, you've got on the hacker family, there's a chance to um, reflect status ailments, so they don't apply to you, it applies to the enemy heroes. Um, and then on the vigilante family, there's a chance to apply dodge buff to all allies. So this one has a chance to steal some of the healing that the enemy team does. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's a little bit of a weird one. It can be useful, but I, I don't see it being as nice as the other two. Um, but yeah, that's the family bonus. It is worth noting, as always, that they have to be unique heroes. Uh, so it can't be two copies of Ru uh, Ruby. It's got to be two different heroes like Ruby and Sato or Ruby and Warchest, for example. Uh, in terms of their personal stats, Ruby comes in with 663 attack, 837 defense, and 1599 HP. So that is a massive skewing away from the attack stat uh, towards the defense and HP stats. Um, it's a big skewing as well. Like that attack stat is quite small in the, the current power creep uh, scheme of things. Uh, the charge speed for Ruby is set to 40, which is slow speed and requires 12 tiles to charge or six ghosted tiles. Uh, charge break requires plus three, which you can do using any of the speed guns in the game. So there's the plus seven of the fire, of the um, Tigger Happy, which is a four star weapon. And then there's two plus nine guns. Um, a double speed break needs to get to uh, 50 speed, which is plus 10. Now, obviously, that can't be done when using weapons alone, since the best red weapons are plus 9 speed. However, if you do pick up the class node at plus 19, this grants 2% speed generation, and that combined with the plus 9 guns is enough to get the double break. So there is some value to getting the 2% speed node, um, but it is a fair way down that talent tree. 
Speaking of class, uh, Ruby is a member of the Demolitions class, which grants the hero a chance to shell shock the enemy by removing buffs from the target whenever they deal damage. Uh, the removal of buffs will also trigger an increase of 15% damage per each buff removed and also apply a flat 50% damage improvement onto normal damage. So this is, in my opinion, one of the best of the talents um, that's out there. Uh, it's essentially a free opportunity to dispel buffs as well as getting bonus damage on top of that so um i personally will typically give my demolitions heroes plus one so at least it activates the class uh, on each of my maxed out heroes uh, by way of a specific emblem path i would recommend going a defense and a hp route uh, and that's mainly because of how ruby's skill is worded uh, so the damage is based on the defense stat so not only by increasing defense and hp you're getting more survival but you're also actually improving her damage output uh, so that is pretty powerful. So what this looks like on the skill tree, uh, if we ignore the fact that I've got Blair here, but if this is Ruby, for example, um, a defense HP route looks like this. So you're following the path that gets you as many defense and HP nodes as possible. Now, as I said, the speed node at the bottom here, um, sorry, I'll just close that. So you can see the speed node there at plus 19, it does have value. Um, as I mentioned, getting that 2% speed node is does make it possible to also um, do that double break. So if you are going that far down the tree, it is probably worth picking up that 2% node as well. So that's what I do for an emblem path for Ruby. Um, I definitely wouldn't be getting the plus 20 node though. Um, increased attack has literally no benefit to, to the skill um, of Ruby. So yeah, plus 19 is as high as I'd go um, because yeah, the 20th node doesn't give any benefit. Um, to their skill set so heading back over to their card and we can take a look at the special skill so the special skill is titled tachyon particle missiles and at level 10 speed at level 10 skill sorry and 40 charge speed will deal 260 percent damage to all enemies uh, this damage is based of the special skill is based on the caster's defense stat uh, it will apply a minus 50% armor ailment to all enemies for three turns. Uh, this effect cannot be cleared. And then finally, all allies will generate 118 armor per turn for three turns. This armor is increased by plus 64 for each turn that the, uh, sorry, the, the target remains undamaged. That's a little bit confusing. So I just want to address that to start with. So um, there's two things actually I want to address. So number one um, is what it means when it says that the damage dealt by this special skill is based on the caster's defense. So what this simply means is that when they do the damage calculation, instead of the attack power being a function of the attack stat multiplied by the 260%, what it is instead is it's just the defense stat multiplied by the 260%. So there's no other change to the damage calculation, right? This still goes into the numerator line on the damage calculation. It's divided by the defense power of the target enemy, and then it procs its way through and it calculates out the damage, right? There's no change to how any of that works. All it changes is it changes what stat is referenced into that calculation. Um, and similarly, because it's now no longer calling attack, it's not looking at any attack buffs or ailments or anything like that. So you're not getting um, benefit from attack buffs, uh, attack debuffs, uh, the berserk thing from like Holden and Sapphire, even blunderbuss. These sort of things don't, those won't affect Ruby's special skill damage. It still affects her tile damage just not her skill damage, all right? Uh, instead, what affects the um, the, the skill damage is things like defense buffs and ailments. So if Ruby got hit by Ghost, for example, that's a minus 44% defense. That means that the defense stat that feeds into the calculation is reduced by 44% or whatever it happens to be, all right? So that's how that works. Um, I'll address the armor bit in a little bit, but while we're on the damage, let's break that down a little bit. Um, so normally I would say attack power, and then I'd tell you about how attack power is the attack stat multiplied by the percentage. In the case of Ruby, that's not how it works. It is instead the defense stat multiplied by the 260%. So we can see that on this graph here, um, or this chart here, sorry. So we can see Ruby is there. She's got 837 attack, 260% on the skill. Um, so 837 defense, I should say, 260% um, on the skill, which comes out as an attack power into the calculation of 2,176. Dividing that by the 12 tiles, and we get an attack power per tile of 181, which is, it's up there, right? It's number two of the red DOA five hitters. The only one that's better than that 
is Scarlet when she casts all three hits. All right, if Scarlet doesn't get off the third hit, Ruby is the best. You know, it's above any of the other ones, including the bonus damage that Scar- uh, Barbed Wire gets hitting armor. So, um, in terms of comparison to a lot of ele- sorry, in terms of comparison to the other elements, right? Ruby is 181. All right, the best in the other elements. In green, Jack comes in at 186. All right, only a little bit better than what uh, Ruby comes in at. Sapphire is the best of the blue hitters, 161. Sarge is the best of the purple, 172. Whipster is the best of the yellows, coming in at a humongous, sarcasm, uh, 158. So not only is Ruby a very good red DOA hitter, but they're actually a very good general DOA hitter, right? The only one that is actually better than Ruby is Jack. And Jack does a very, very similar thing, if you uh, recall, where his damage output is also based on his defense stat. And then the defense stat is just jacked, pardon, not intended there, but it's massive, right? So it's the same sort of mechanic. And because of that, Ruby is actually still a very good hitter as well. Um, So yeah, just by way of comparison, Ruby 181, best one other in the other elements is Jack at 186. Everyone else worse than, than Ruby. Um, moving on from the damage onto the second part of her skill, which is the application of the armor debuff. Uh, so if you've been watching a lot of my review videos, you'd know that I'm generally not a big fan of these um, healing and armor increase or decrease effects. I typically don't find them to be very useful because either they're too small in their percentage or they're too limited in their effect. So in this case, uh, it is 50%. It's hefty but it's only applying to one of the three different healing mechanisms in the game, right? So it means that it's pretty easy to work around. Um, so the three mechanisms I'm talking about, you've got armor, healing, or direct heal, and you've got minions, right? This only affects armor. So the easiest way to counter this effect is just not bring armor. Bring healing in a different f- source, right? Bring a direct healer, bring a minion generator. Completely negates the armor debuff that, that she gives off. So. It is much more useful in attack situations, um, seeing as you can choose what defense team you're gonna go against. So if there's a defense team and it's got like Aviana, for example, and Ghost, you've got two armor generating flanks. Yeah, okay, cool. It might be useful in that situation. But generally speaking, I'm not a huge fan of this effect. Uh, The final part of her skill is the armor over time buff uh, granted to all allies. So this is where it gets confusing again. So it might take me a little bit to explain all of this, so bear with me a touch. So this is the strongest form of armor over time uh, in that it scales up by plus 64 armor per turn that they don't receive damage. It's only been seen on one other hero, which is Pavati, uh, a very old hero of the month, but she was, it, it works really well. It is a very good effect. All right. It can be a little bit confusing, um, but basically what it is, if Ruby casts her skill, uh, they get 118 armor in the first turn. If they don't receive any form of damage, any form of damage at all, the second turn it becomes 182 armor. So that's 118 plus 64. If again they don't receive any damage in that second turn, then the final turn will result in 246 armor, which is a total of 546 armor generated. So roughly a third of her health. It comes back in armor or is overhealed in armor. So to put that in perspective, if all five of your allies result in that 546 armor generated, it comes out as being equal fifth in terms of all of the healers and pseudo healers in the game, right? It comes out as equal fifth alongside Jocosta and El Coyote, who are some of the best direct healers in the game. Realistically though, this situation where all five allies get 546 armor, it's not happening, right? It means that to, for that to happen, all five of your heroes need to take literally zero damage for three turns, which is just not realistic. The only way that happens is if you get very lucky with dodges and um, mischances or whatever, right? Because there's always going to be some form of damage that comes uh, onto your team in some facet during those three turns. If we go back from the best case scenario and we look at the worst case scenario, right? So this is where there's no improvement. It is just the flat 118 each turn for three turns. That actually is still very good, right? It comes in at 354 armor for each ally, which ranks Ruby as the 18th best direct or pseudo healer of 52 in the game. 
All right, so 18th out of 52 on a hero who we've already discussed has the equal up there with the best possible DOA 5 hitting damage uh, in the game. So, you know, if we just slim that list down instead of looking at all 52 options, if we just look at the red ones, all right, we can see that Ruby comes in at fourth rank, right? The best one is Pulse, followed by Jocasta and Roxy, but then there's Ruby sitting in there. Uh, and this is, as I said, her minimum armor, right? As noted, if we do get that maximum scenario, it comes in at 227, so it jumps up a couple spots. Realistically, though, it's going to sit somewhere between the two. It's going to sit somewhere between 148 and 227 armor per turn. Um, so there are two final things that I actually need to really highlight with this ability. Right? Number one is that the damage can come from literally any source. Okay, It can be strong tiles, it can be weak tiles, it can be missing tiles. If you don't have heroes from a color in your team and you sling an off-color tile, so one that there's no hero attached to it, it still deals one damage. So that still counts as damage. Um, the damage can be minions, it can be DOT, it can even be something like counter-attack. Right? It can be any damage source. So when you encounter Ruby on a defense team, you really have two, like a choice you have to make. You have to either choose to sling tiles randomly across the board to stop them from generating the additional armor, but this risks them gaining additional charge, right? Because charge on a defending team is tied with the tiles they receive, right? So your flip side is that you don't sling tiles to prevent them from charging, but they do gain that bonus armor generated over time. So it is a little bit of a choice um, that you have to make. And as I said, the damage can come from literally anywhere. The second thing I need to highlight is that the bonus armor sticks. So what I mean by this is that if we have a scenario where Ruby fires, turn one, no damage, beauty. So we got 118 first turn, then we get 180. But if they then receive damage in the third turn, right they don't reset back to the 118 for that final turn it stays at 180 so it is 118 180 damage stays at 180 right it doesn't drop back down to the 118 okay so overall ruby is a very solid and extremely versatile hero right not only does she have the very good doa 5 damage output right it's up there with the best in the game but she it's also tied and coupled with a pretty decent pseudo healer coming in at 18th of the 52 options. The combination of both damage and healing, it's not unheard of. We see it fairly often on some other heroes, but what we don't see is that a situation where both sides of it are strong enough that it could be considered the primary ability on another hero, right? That's what sets Ruby apart. Ruby is able to if you looked at either the damage or the armor in a vacuum, you could say, yeah, that's her primary function. It could be either way, which makes Ruby very, very unique in that regard. So in terms of a grading, because I do need to wrap up, we have been talking for a little bit here. I'm going to give Ruby an A- minus for war and raid attacks. And that's on the back of her being so versatile. It can go and fill either a damage slot or a, a healing slot in the team. Um, and so by being able to bring one hero to do both slots is very powerful. For War Machines, unfortunately, I do have to drop it down to a C plus. And this is because tile damage is still based on that attack stat and that attack stat is poor. The armor is nice, but it doesn't actually help because it, too much because it's over time. And on War Machines, there isn't any armor to negate. So I am dropping it down to a C plus for War Machines. On events, I'm going to give it a B minus. Uh, the DOA damage is nice. The armor helps towards the health scoring, but ultimately, there's nothing in the skill here which really contributes to eventing. And the tile damage again comes from the attack stat, which is poor. Um, in terms of defense situations, so raid and war defenses, I'm going to bump it up to an A grade. Okay, I think that Ruby is going to be a fantastic defensive hero, and I think that if we do transition to a red meta in war tanks, so Pulse being the dominant. I think Ruby is actually the second best tank option behind Pulse. So on a defense team, I would say that Ruby's best spot is either tank or flank position. So that's in a red meta, I'd say she's a very, very good option to have. 
Uh, looking at the tournament setup, so in Bloody Battle, I'm going to go down to a C plus for attack and a B minus for defense. This is because we lose like literally half the skill. It just becomes the damage output. Um, it's not the rest of it. On buff boosters, back up to an A- minus on attack and an A grade for defense because there is an armor generation buff that's given out to all allies. Unfortunately, Ruby doesn't benefit from the increased attack because her percentage of her skill damage is done off the defense stat. So, yeah. But anyway, her, uh, all of the allies benefit from it. Uh, and then in charged attack, I'm also going to give an A- minus for attack and an A grade for defense because we do go up from 40 speed up to 65. So overall, that grading comes in at a B grade for attack and an A minus for defense. And that concludes the content that I have for this review of Ruby. Uh, it is a little bit longer than my usual one, so I apologize for that. But this is also just my personal opinion, right? I do love hearing your thoughts and feedback on these heroes. So please do jump down to the comment section of this video. Leave me a note. I love reading them and I try to respond as to as many as I can. If you did enjoy the video and found it to be useful, please like the video, subscribe to my channel. There's heaps more around, but most importantly, share the video because if you found it to be useful for yourself, chances are it's going to be useful to the other people you play with as well. Uh, thank you once again for tuning in and joining me for this review. I do hope that I will see you again soon. But until then, please stay safe, good luck, and happy gaming. Cheers. Bye.